What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Golang's context package. It's very, very important because a lot of interviews, Golang interviews for some kind of a job, are asking everything about Golang context package. They are probably going to ask you to implement something like that. So it's very common use case in the industry. But before we continue, if you like the content I'm providing to you, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comment, jump into my Discord community so you can level up and turn into a high value software engineer. So without any further ado, let's get started. So basically, first of all, we're gonna mimic some kind of a real use case and um, let's make a function which is gonna be a fetch, how are we gonna call this? Fetch third party stuff. And we're gonna say which uh, can be slow, which is not a correct function name, but hey, for the sake of this tutorial, because in a, a very common use case is that you are in one of your handlers, in your HTTP handlers, you're going to enrich some user struct or something, or you're gonna call some third party APIs and you have actually no clue how long it's gonna take because it's their servers. And a lot of people think that making resilient systems is all about handling errors. But that's not the case. Uh, a lot of time, you also want to minimize or reduce the inconsistency of functions that's going to take a long time, especially these third party functions, right? Because they are the cause of all evil because we don't have any control, right? So we're going to say uh, fetch third party stuff, which can be slow and it's going to return, uh, it could return anything, right? But we are going to return an int and we're also going to return an error because a lot of people were asking me, yeah, but how? Am I going to handle errors coming from GoRoutine and, and all that stuff, right? So, hey, I'm going to teach you everything, you know. So, uh, that's what we're going to do. Um, of course, we need to mimic, we need to replica replicate some kind of an HTTP round trip. Lag, delay. So, we're going to say time, uh, we're going to sleep here, and we're going to say time, uh, milliseconds, and that's going to be, let's say, 500, which is, hey, which is slow, right? And then we're gonna return, in this case, what are we gonna return? I think we're gonna return the devil, which is 666, 666 rather, and uh, null, right? So that's this, or uh, fetch third party stuff, which can be slow, right? Then we are gonna make actually our own function, right? Because this main will basically replicate, uh, for example, an uh, HTTP handler, which user or getting can call. And then it will basically call some some of your own business logic, and that's exactly this function. So we're going to say uh, fetch uh, user data, for example, right? But we are good engineers, so we provided a context, which is going to be a CTX context context, and then we're going to say a user ID, which is going to be an int, and it's going to return exactly what uh, we want, an int and an error uh, like this. And then um, we're gonna say something like, uh, we could do a lot of stuff, but for the sake of, we're gonna call, let's save this first. Uh, we're gonna call this fetch third party stuff, which can be slow, yes. So we're gonna say that the value uh, and the error is gonna be fetch third party stuff, which can be slow. We're gonna say if the error is not uh, nil, we're gonna return zero and an uh, error here, and then in this case, we're gonna return the value and no, right? And you could say, yeah, but Anthony, why are you why are you doing this? You could actually just return fetch third party stuff, which can be slow, so we don't need to do this here. You are 100% right, but we are gonna, we're gonna use this, right? So, hey, I'm already thinking up front. I'm a chess player. That's, that's not true, but hey. So that's that's thing. So then in our HTTP handler, what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna say uh, val VS Code, please. Uh, we're gonna say val r is gonna be a fetch user data, right? We're gonna give it a context, and actually you should do it like this. Context is gonna be a context, for example, background, and then we're gonna place in this context here, and then we're gonna give it a user ID. And to make it super clean, we're gonna say a user ID is gonna be 10, for example, and we're gonna place this user ID in here. Then we're gonna fetch this error, we're gonna check it uh, like this. And if there is an error, we're gonna say log fatal, uh, like this error, right? And in that case, we're gonna actually, when there is no error, we're gonna print the result. We're gonna say, uh, actually result is gonna be the value. Yes, and then we're gonna say, we're gonna measure, right? We need to measure this. So we're gonna say uh, start, it's gonna be time now. We're 
gonna copy this and we're gonna say this whole shebang took us time since start right and then if we uh, do a go run main dot go <clears throat> then we're gonna see it takes us exactly 500 milliseconds to fetch the devil to fetch our result right and you can already see it coming right this could actually take a, uh, a minute two minutes we don't know right so it's inconsistent it could be an inconsistent behavior uh, where we have no we, we, we don't we cannot control this or do we yes we can so how can we control this how can we make this deterministic right and that's basically by using golang's context package so uh, of course, we already have this context here in our fetch user data. So what we're going what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna say, and we're gonna make a uh, a new context, and we're gonna say a cancel, and you will see why why this is needed, and that's gonna be a context with timeout, right? And with timeout basically means that we're gonna create some kind of a context that will timeout after a certain after a certain duration, which we can choose, right? So we're gonna first of all put in the parent context, and then we're gonna say time, um, millisecond, and we're gonna say a 200 milliseconds. That's the maximum, which is already a lot, but uh, a 200 milliseconds, that's the maximum amount I want this third party shenanigans will take to fetch me the results I want, right? And this cancel is very important because uh, what you need to do is basically defer this guy, right? Defer this, why? Because otherwise we could have uh, leaking contexts, right? We don't want that. So we're gonna defer cancel, which basically means that if this function returns, it's going to, I cannot GD it, but it's going to, to close it, to stop it, to cancel it, right? Cool, um, so that's 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 okay. Uh, the next problem we have is this fetch third party stuff which can be slow. So we need to basically schedule this guy in a go routine. So we're gonna say go funk. We're gonna put this guy, we're gonna schedule him somewhere else. Um, and of course, because it's a go funk, we cannot return, right? Uh, it, it, it's basically just, it, it's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete all this stuff Right, and we're gonna say, we need to find a way to basically communicate back these values into our main routine. How are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna do this with channels, right? So first of all, we're gonna make a response, which is gonna be a struct, and we're gonna say it has a value, right? And this value is gonna be an int, and uh, it's gonna have an error, which is gonna be an error, right? Which is basically, this response is exactly these two values here, right? You see, an int and an error is basically our response, right? So then we're gonna make a channel. We're gonna say that the response channel is going to be make me a channel of a response. Like that. And then we can actually do uh, this, right? We could say, yo, response channel. I'm gonna write a response in this, uh, from this go routine, response. And we're gonna say <clears throat> that val, the value, is going to be the val, right? And the r is going to be the r. Perfectly fine. So that's all set up. Then we're gonna basically do a for select, right? Because we need to wait, right? So everybody is doing is shenanigans in different go routines. The context is doing his stuff, uh, the context package and, and this fetch third party stuff, which can be slow is doing his stuff in his go routine. So we are gonna synchronize. We're gonna have some synergy in our function. That's why we're gonna do a for. And uh, we're gonna do a select because we don't need to listen for one ch uh, channel. We're gonna listen for two channels, right? And I will say, uh, I'm gonna show you exactly which these two channels are gonna be. The first is gonna be um, case. Uh, and we're gonna say uh, case ctx, which is this guy, right? This new ctx we, we just created. We're gonna say ctx dom, like that. Right. We need to also do a select. Uh, that's my bad. So I'm gonna do a select here, wrap it in here, and save it for formatting. Yes. So we're gonna say case is ctx done. That basically means that that basically means done is getting called from the moment our timeout is being triggered. Right. And when is when is that being triggered? It's being triggered after 200 milliseconds. So after 
if we call fetch user data after 200 milliseconds, this channel will be closed, right? And this done channel is basically an empty struct, right? It's just closing an empty struct because an empty struct has no bytes. So it's basically a free thing. You just close nothing. <laughs> it's just compiler stuff. Uh, the compiler will compile this into what it needs to compile, but it will not uh, allocate any bytes because it's an empty struct, right? No memory. Hey, in this economical crisis, no bytes is perfectly fine, right? Need to save money. So we have this uh, case. This is done. What we're gonna do? What? What or what would you do when this timeout is being triggered? When your function is too slow? Exactly. You're gonna return an error, right? So we're gonna say return zero because we don't return an int. You could do zero minus one, whatever. Uh, just in your case, this would be may maybe a strict or something, right? You, uh, maybe a pointer to a strict, you could return nil or something, right? In our case, it's just an int, so we're going to return zero, which means that it's nothing. So we're going to return this, and then we're going to return um, fmt error f, and we're going to say um, function. Actually, let let's make it better. We're going to say uh, third. Fetching, wait, we're going to say fetching data from third party took to one. Something like that, right? So that's very simple. If it takes longer than we expected, we're going to return an error that it took too long. Um, and then we are going to do another case, which is basically our response, right? We're going to say that the response, when the function actually returns on time, it will return a response, which is basically this guy, right? It's going to be returning the devil and no error. So we're going to say case response, and we're going to assign that to a channel, and it's going to be, yes, it's going to be the response channel. You're already, uh, I see you thinking, and you're right. So we have this response, and then actually what we're going to return is basically the response uh, value and the response uh, add, right? Why am I capping this like this, right? And then we can delete this so it can block until something is happening. So that's fine. So basically, right now, everything is set up. This fetch user data is being refactored in a way that is being deterministic based on the timeout we provided. So with this, we are 100% sure that this fetch user data will not, not take longer than 200 milliseconds, which is amazing, right? And which language can, which kind of language can do this so fast, so clean? Exactly, none. Um, all right, so let's let's run this let's run this bad boy. We're gonna say go run main dot go. Uh, okay, cool. And we see an error, right? We see fetching data from third party took too long. Why? Because we have a timeout of two hundred milliseconds, but this fetch third party slow thingy will take five hundred milliseconds. It's too long. It's too slow. For example, let's make this guy behave like it should be. For example, we're gonna say uh, one hundred fifty milliseconds. For example which is basically uh, much faster than our context. And if we run this again, uh, go or run may not go like this, boom. Then we have a result and it took 150 milliseconds. You see, that's basically how you can uh, re-implement uh, Golang's context pack package and it's going to be the most, um, yeah, th this use case is going to be the most used one. Of course, you could also store variables inside context Right, you could say uh, this context, you could say, uh, for example, uh, with value, right? And then we also need to provide probably a context. Uh, we're going to say a, a context with background. Yeah, fine. And then we're going to say a key is going to be hello, uh, foo, and the value is going to be bar or something, right? So now we have, and of course, it's going to, it's going to, it's a little warning about the key types and everything, but don't worry about that. So, because it's a string, right? Um, but it's fine. So this CTX, basically uh, right now is a context with value, which basically means that if we pipe this in uh, fetch user data, uh, we can actually, um, here we could actually retrieve this value. We could say value, I think it's gonna be CTX um, value. Let me quickly see what is this. We need to provide a key. It's gonna be foo, I guess. Is that true, what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, and then we could actually FMT print LN, the val here. Uh, and you could say val, you could call, you need to cast this, right? Because uh, now it's a string, but uh, so it print LN will work fine. 
But if you want to use this, for example, you do you put a strict inside of this, you will need to cast because it's an interface type and any type. So you need to cast that. But in our case, it's a string. Uh, so we could do this. Uh, foo, right? And then we print, what am I doing here? And then we print a value like that. And then we can actually uh, go run main.go. And you see it's bar, right? That's why you can use this context because uh, you can already imagine if you want to share state between all these go routines popping up, uh, putting, put, putting in, placing, assigning it inside of a context value is very interesting. What's a very good use case for doing that? How I am I'm doing it is with request IDs, right? You have some kind of a middleware in your system, in your microservices, and uh, some request is coming in, and you're calling all these other stuff um, in, in your application. And the first request, you can actually generate a request ID, put it inside of a context, and each time you're... Uh, uh, each time there is an error occurring in one of your functions, you can actually uh, also lock the request ID so you can trace uh, the user's behavior. You can trace your application based on the request ID in Grafana, Elasticsearch, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is next level shit. That's actually uh, industry stuff. That's what, what you're going to do uh, if, you, if you have a job, if you do this in a day-to-day -day basis in a decent company, right? So uh, if you like this video, if you like the content I'm providing to you, Subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comment to boost the YouTube algorithm because the YouTube algorithm is a nasty, filthy, whatever. It's filthy, so we need to boost this video so everybody can enjoy uh, the value I am providing, right? And also jump into the Discord, very important. I have a Discord community with over, I think, 350 people where we basically, uh, where I'm helping people, uh, watching my videos, having some questions, I'm answering them personally myself. And I'm looking forward to see you in one of my future videos or in my live streams. Thanks for watching. Peace out.